Hello and welcome to our video featuring Edpuzzle for online content. My name is Corinne Kelly and I am an instructor at SOIDA, one of the state ed techs in Ohio. If you'd like to reach me with any questions following this program, please feel free to email me at corinne at soida.org, C-A-R-Y-N at S-O-I-T-A dot org, and I'd be more than happy to answer any and all of your Edpuzzle related questions. The only URL you're going to need uh, to utilize Edpuzzle is edpuzzle.com. Okay, so we're going to be heading there in just a moment. If you would like to receive credit for watching this video toward your PD requirements, please head to ohioedtext.org, fill out the form that is included with all of these videos, and then this is the code you're going to need for the Edpuzzle video. EDPZ has to be all caps, and then once you are able to fill that out, you should be uh, receiving a uh, PD certificate for this video. Okay? All right. We're going to get out of here, and we're going to go to edpuzzle.com and get started. So what Edpuzzle is, is it's a tool that allows you to take a video and add content. Okay? So you're going to be able to add questions in the video. You can add audio notes to the video. You can trim the video. You can do all kinds of things. So you're going to be able to take a video that's already there or your own video and um, make it your own, make it perfect for what you're doing with your kids. Okay? So this is the Edpuzzle homepage. I'm actually going to log out just so I can show you. Okay? There we go. Um, so when you come in here, when you sign up, make sure that you say, I'm a teacher. Okay, the kids will say, I'm a student. And then if you wanted to sign in, you already had an account, I just sign in with Google. And that's what you're going to have a lot of your kids do is just connect their Google accounts. It's one less thing. Okay? All right, I'm going to come in here and choose my account. And it might get ask you for permissions and things like that. And then we're good to go. All right. So you can see here I have 14 of 20 storage views. So I've got in my content, my content over here, it looks like 14 videos, okay? You can um, get rid of your videos. I'm actually going to get rid of some of these now, okay, to free them up. Um, another thing that you can do is utilize videos that are already there to expand your space, and you can also delete, delete. Um, you can also refer friends to um, get yourself some more space. So that's a nice thing to be able to do. Um, <clears throat> if you know you're using it and you've got some friends that are going to sign up, go ahead and refer each other and some of you can get some additional space. They do offer paid options um, for schools and districts, so that's something to explore. If everyone in your school is really into this and this is a perfect fit for you, it might be worth using some money for it. But you are able to have 20 videos in here um, for free. And <clears throat> that's, that's not too shabby, right? Okay, so let's see. Um, so when you come in here, you can click Add Content, all right? You can create a video from existing videos, or if you have your own video that you want to do this to, and it's not living somewhere online, it's not on YouTube, it's on your computer, you're also able to upload a video, and that is what sets this apart from some of the other tools that do things that are kind of similar, is the ability to upload your own videos, okay? You also can create student projects if you want to do that with instructions and goals um, and create folders so you can organize your stuff, okay? They have some really great things. I'm going to go over here just so we can go through the interface a little bit and then I'll show you what you can do to your videos. Um, I'm going to my home page. So this is showing me some trending things in my area. Um, there's a curriculum. So they've actually gone through um, teacher submitted videos and curated them by grade band, subject area, etc. So if I go into elementary school, I can look by subject or by grade. Maybe I need to go into grade and I'm looking for something for first grade, language arts, reading, sequence of events. Here I have a video on sequence of events. So you don't have to recreate the wheel. And the really nice thing is, 
Um, like I said, if it's already made, it's not taking up all of your storage, right? Um, when you find these videos, if you like them, you are able to use them just as is. You can come down here and assign. I'll show you how to get your kids in here in just a minute to assign them. You can make a copy of it and do your own thing to it as well. Or you can share it. If you find something and say, hey, so-and-so was looking for a video on this, you can share. Um, and then you can also edit this as well. Okay, let me get out of here. All right, so they have that curriculum. Um, I have my school here. Okay, so because I have my school linked, um, other teachers that are using this in my school, their videos I'll be able to find. There's some STEM videos there. Okay, and then my contents, all my stuff. They have some popular channels down here. Okay, um, the Ed Puzzle channel are all of the Ed Puzzles that people have already made. So they're not videos by Ed Puzzle, but they are actual Ed Puzzle that already have maybe questions added to them and things like that. So these have already kind of gone through the process and been submitted. Um, then you've got YouTube, Khan Academy, TED Talks, all of these great um, providers of content that you're able to come in here and find stuff really easily. And then you can always just use the search here. I can search content up top and search everything. Or if I'm in a particular channel like YouTube right here, I can search YouTube. I'm going to go into Crash Course. And let's see what we can find. They have so much good stuff. Crash Course is great for high school, like your higher level kids. Um, you always want to preview it. He talks really quickly. He makes funny jokes, but you always want to preview any video, not just Crash Course, any video that you're going to use with your kids because you just never know. Um, if you're looking for something that's kind of like this but for younger kids, if you go to YouTube and you search Crash Course Kids, okay, this gal does a great job too. All right, so let's do landforms. I'm going to select this. All right, and I want to add some content to this, so I'm going to say edit. All right, and then this is the editor we're going to utilize for Edpuzzle, okay? So cut. I'm in cut right now. Why cut? Maybe I only want to show a certain segment of this. How many times have you had a video where you're like, man, there's this three minutes in this video that's just perfect for what we want to talk about, and the video is 20 minutes long, so you're like fast forwarding, and you're kind of trying to um, get it exactly where you want it. So this is going to allow us to trim, and to trim, all you do is you grab it, Come here, you. All right, so maybe I just took the beginning off. Then you can do voiceover. Now, with voiceover, you'll need a mic. So I'm on a laptop. I have an integrated mic. If you have a computer that doesn't have that, for whatever reason, you'll need like a little USB stick mic or even a headphones with an integrated mic, something with a microphone. Um, so you would just say start recording. And now I'm talking over her in our video, and it's, my voice is going to be over the um, existing audio. And I'll stop. See, there's my recording. Okay, so you'll be able to do that. I, and sometimes you want to do that because you're like, this is a really nice animation of this, but I want to explain it in a way that I know my kids are going to understand, and that can be a really helpful feature, okay? And then there's the questions. So what I like to do is just kind of run the video. So I'll pause it. I'm ready to ask a question. And I'll say, and I chose multiple choice. You can do multiple choice, open-ended, or you can just put a note in there where the kids aren't going to respond to anything, but it's going to pop up. Like if she said something really important, you'll be like, hey, this is a really important little tidbit. Make sure that you um, 
jot this down or put it in your notes. This is going to be discussed in class tomorrow. That sort of thing, you can put it in there. I'm going to do a multiple choice question and say how many, I'm going to type it correctly, here we go, many spheres make up the earth. And I can say two, four, and another one, six. And then you can say if you are going to accept it or not. So I'm going to click the X on this one, the check mark on that, and then the X on that. All right? And then hit Save. So now I've got a question there. And then the kids would be able to, as they come in and take this, this would stop, pop up, and they would answer it. Okay? And then we just keep going. <laughs> okay, and then I can do another one here where I say, okay, open-ended question, plateau is the Spanish word, I spelled Spanish wrong, thank you, Grammarly, <laughs> okay, and then I'll say save, and they'll have to type that in, okay, so then when you're done, with this, and you can see I can jump to all my questions here. I can see how this is going to go. I can say finish, and then I'm able to assign. And I've got my classes in here. Now, you can create classes down here. Um, it says add new class right over here. Um, and then you can create them manually, okay? Or if you're using Google Classroom, you can say import class from Google Classroom. It initially, the first time you do this, it will come in and ask if you want to link your class. You'll say yes, and then it pulls all your classes up and you choose which one you want, okay? Um, you are able to assign this to multiple classes. So I've got two seventh grade social studies classes. I can assign this to both of them. Do look at this though. Starts today. When is it due? Do I want to prevent skipping? That means, am I going to let them skip ahead? Are they going to have the control where they could skip over parts of the video? Yeah, I'm going to prevent skipping. And then, do I want to turn on closed captioning? If that's something my kids use, then yes. And then, do I want to post this in Google Classroom? And if you are having your kids go to Google Classroom to get their content, then yeah, you want to do that, okay? You can give this a due date. Maybe this is due Friday. And then I can assign it. All right. And then, are we ready? Looks like it's created assignment. Prevented skipping. Go live. So live mode, what that lets you do, that's if you wanted to do this with the kids. Okay? So you can tell your students, you've got your projector up, tell them to go to Edpuzzle and go into their class, and the live assignment's going to appear on their screen, and then it will track their progress and responses during the assignment. But So this is if you are doing it in class and you wanted to run it right now. Instead of having them come in later and do the self-paced, so if you're doing online learning, you're going to want to do that. Um, you would do this live in class. Okay, I'm going to X out of that. Right. Okay. All right, let's do this. All right, so I'm going to I'm going to go to classroom and make sure that posted. This is a kid. There's my Ed Puzzle assignment because I told it to post. They'll be able to come in here. They're going to go to Ed Puzzle, sign in with Google, choose their account, and here they are. It's it's that easy. So if you're using Google Classroom already and you're looking for a great way to deliver content, this is it. Now, I shouldn't have turned on, I shouldn't have let them skip, or I should have let them skip so that I could demo it for you. Just close captions. Okay, I muted it just for the sake of us. 
me turn it all the way down. Okay, so um, the kids will sit here and watch it. Now they can see where the questions are, but if you turn off the skipping, they can't skip ahead to the questions. If you don't do that, you are going to have some kids that just go to the question and answer it. Maybe don't watch the video at all. So it's, it's up to you what you want to allow them to do or not allow them to do. Um, it might just depend on the class, right? Okay, I'm going to answer one question in here. It's almost there. <laughs> All right. See how it paused the video, and now it's coming in here, and I'm going to say, yep, and I got that correct. I'm going to continue on, um, and I'm not going to sit here and make you guys watch the whole thing, but then when they're done, it submits it. I'm going to pause this, close that. Okay. And then I'm going to refresh this because I should see. All right. Should see at some point. <laughs> that somebody's done something. Oh, I need to go to my classes. Sorry. Let me go to my classes. And. There we go. There we go. Um, so I can see there's the kid that I was that I was just pretending to be was in there. Um, so I have a kid that has actually watched some of that video, but they haven't turned it in yet. And you can see how much they've watched. Look at that. Look at all that information. Isn't that great. You can see what. Um, how they answered. You can override grades in this, okay, if they answer their questions um, wrong or partially wrong, especially for those short, in, short response questions, um, you'll be able to adjust their grade. And also for the short response, you'll have to come in and manually grade those, right, because it didn't ask me for a correct answer. So I'll be able to come in really quickly and manually grade those. It has up here previous student and next student, so that lets me really easily navigate from student to student in there. Okay, and then the grade book, see that? Okay, I'm in the grade book for this class because I was already in a class. So I can see the grade book for this class, but you can use this drop down to um, go through your classes. It's going to show you how much time they've spent total. Um, and all of their assignments, their and their total score, and then their score for each um, one of these that you assign. Okay, so it's a really powerful tool. It can be just a quick check with just a couple questions, or it can have a lot of questions. It can also be something where you have them watching, you just put some notes in for them to consider, and then maybe you have a Google Meet later to discuss the video. So it can be kind of um, a little prepped. A little prep time for like a flipped classroom or something like that. Um, so I really like it. Uh, like I said, you get 20 of these videos in my content for free. So when you go into content, my content, as soon as you go in and edit it and make it your own, it counts towards your content, right? Um, but you can always refer other people to earn more space. Um, and like I said, if your schools really like it, this is available for purchase as well, okay? Please, 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 if you have any questions, email me. I'd love to chat about it. You can tell I really like this tool. Again, my email is Corinne, C-A-R-Y-N, at soida.org. And I hope I get to see you again in another video. Thank you.